वेलकम टू ए टी सी एम द एमरजेंसी मेडिसिन चैनल टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अरी ऑफ अ पेशेंट हू प्रसेंटेड टू अवर इयर विथ टेकमिया कैन वी स्टार्ट वी हैव अ सिक्सटी सेवन इयर ओल्ड मेल पेशेंट हू इज ए नॉन केस ऑफ सी ए डी सी ओ पी डी हू प्रसेंटेड टू इ आर विथ कंप्लेन ऑफ पैलपिटेशन एंड जर्नलाइज वीकनेस इन लास्ट वन आवर कैन हाउ विल यू अप्रोच द पेशेंट बेसिकली I'll first receive him in my uh, bedside on a trolley. Okay. And keep her head and slightly elevated. Okay. And I'll just give a bit more history. Does he have any chest pain or anything along with this? Uh, he doesn't have any chest pain hmm. or any breathlessness. Nothing. And he is fully conscious oriented and hmm. obeying commands. Okay. So my initial tensor case is when he is conscious oriented and he's talking and all that. So we went to the primary survey. Okay. So how is the airway now? Airway is patent. Patent. Airway is patent. Uh, breathing part. How is the respiratory rate? Uh, respiratory rate is 18 per minute uh, with a saturation. saturation of 99. एक्सपोजर Okay. So the ECG is showing a narrow complex irregular tachycardia. Okay. The rate of around 140 160 around that rate. Okay. What else will you do if the uh, yeah. um, as a part of urgents? If the patient is having hypoxia, mm. we can. So basically, I will be going from A B C. So airway is okay. So for the breathing part, he is having desaturation. I think we will add him for supplementary oxygenation. Okay. But now this person is having a good saturation. Full saturation. So, yeah. so we are not adding any supplementary oxygen. The so circulatory part, suppose if he is in acute hypotension, we can even go for initial fluid resuscitation, and then we treat the actual cause. Mm. Then so we will also connect the cardiac, uh, cardiac monitor. monitor. Okay. So coming to the this person, we have a ECG showing an irregular narrow complex tachycardia. Yes. The rate of around 160, 170, and he is in a hypotensive state. Okay. So coming uh, assessing through the ACS algorithm. Okay. Uh, we con- uh, consider all the parameters which we can consider this patient to be stable or unstable. Okay. So we think about the uh, clinical symptoms. That is, does he have any chest pain? He doesn't have any chest pain, yes. but he has hypotension. Uh, there is no altered sensorium. Uh, chest is clear. There is no signs of any acute uh, pulmonary. Uh, the signs are Cardiac- there. Not there, but his uh, extremities are cold and clammy. So two things are come positive. One is hypotension, and okay. second is he is in shock. So basically, we have an unstable tachycardia with an irregular uh, rhythm. So, so how will you manage this patient? So most probably he is in a uh, most probably is an unstable AF. So our management will be going with synchronized cardio version. So basically, in ACLS they have given uh, different managements for different. Algorithm that is stable and unstable. Coming to the unstable, the primary um, mean of management is the synchronized cardio version, and that again for different arrhythmias they have different dosages of uh, shock or uh, recommended range of shock. So coming to a irregular or a unstable uh, this thing uh, regular tachycardia, we start with a joule of 50 to 100, starting with 50. But in this case, we have a irregular narrow compressed tachycardia, so we have to set a joule starting at least with 120 within the sync mode. So coming to the synchronous cardio version first we will explain to the bystander and the patient and the bystander what is going on so basically this person came with complaints of palpitation ecg showing a narrow complex irregular tachycardia which is currently in an unstable state so we have to go with synchronous cardio version we explain the procedure what are things we are going to do and get a consent second we will arrange crash cart and all the other necessary equipments and necessary necessary for a crash because at any time the patient can go bad and he will go for even for a cardiac arrest so the crash cart has been arranged yes. so we connected the patient to monitor we secured two large bore iv cannulas and the third will be sedation along with some analgesia because we are giving a direct dc shock to the per- person so shock is always painful we give sedation along with analgesia This both, especially he is having CAD and COPD as common, com- so I prefer for a low dose, uh, midas plus fenda as the sedation plus uh, this thing, analgesia, which also you can arrange. 
So we are taking the consent. We have arranged the crash cart and we have given him sedation and uh, this thing. Manager, see after explaining the procedure. So now he is in a sedated state. So now we can connect the uh, defibrillator. So turning on the defibrillator, we have the monitor itself which will be showing the rhythm which we already connected through the leads. It will be showing, and then we will be splitting the adequate joules. So this person will be requiring a joule of at least starting 120 which will be setting and then we will press the sync mode as soon as we press the sync mode we can actually see a line coming and place coming all over all the R waves in the uh, this thing rhythm and once that comes we can confirm this is in the sync uh, mode and then we can take the paddles either we can use the pads or the paddles this machine is having mainly paddles so we are removing the paddles we are applying gel on both you can apply gel so we have applied gel on both paddles and we are rubbing and then so we have set a joule of 120 we have put it on synchronized mode the patient is sedated and analgesi has been given and now we are going to give synchronized cardioversion so just like uh, any other defibrillation we will charge charge we can either use a charge button in the paddle itself or we can press the charge in the machine itself we can press charge once it is charged it will, it will uh, say that shock is ready then we place just like in defibrillation in both this area one is near the apex and one in the right infracostal area and uh, <coughs> infraclavicular area and then press and hold for at least 5 to 10 seconds because I mean, it's a synchronized cardio version it will take at least a few seconds for the shock to deliver because it has to get sync with the uh, marker in the RV so immediately after uh, this thing, the shock may not get delivered, so we keep and hold for at least 5 seconds and once the shock delivered, we remove the paddles and reassess the patient. Reassessing, we will look for the rhythm in the monitor, we will reassess the vitals of the patient, his oxygenation, his hemodynamics, his BP, everything we will reassess. And suppose the rhythm is not reverting, we will again increase the joules to 150 or 200 and again give a repeat shock. So how is the rhythm now? Uh, uh, we reassess the patient. The patient is in normal sinus rhythm. Hmm. Uh, then the patient's uh, blood pressure improved to 120 over 80 after our synchronized cardio version. Okay. So now our, our procedure has been completed and he has come back to his normal sinus rhythm. Now he will be putting him on cardiac monitoring at least and admission for at least for a day for observation because he can again any time revert back to his previous form. So. Uh, and the other causes also should be uh, evaluated. So why this happened also we have to evaluate. So in the emergency management, our part is done. So next we will be really shifting for further management. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.